stating that trafficking of women was the third largest illegal activity in the world, noted British barrister Baroness Patricia Scotland on Saturday stated that there was a need for international trade to pay proper attention to human trafficking so that illegal activities could be stopped. So my journey has, I think, been predicated upon a fundamental belief which has crystallized over the years into a certainty that all men and women, be they black or white, tall or short, fat or thin, gay or straight, persons of faith or of none, able-bodied or suffering a disability, old or young, rich or poor, wherever they are situated in the world, have, as a result of their common humanity, a similar worth, and thus are all, all, equally worthy of respect and love. Our quintessential humanity binds each of us, like 99.9% of our DNA, one to the other. We are essentially, all of us, one family. The 0.1% which separates us, separates our DNA one from the other, makes us male or female, provides the essence of our individuality, distinguishes us one from another, but does not mask our intrinsic human nature. And I believe it's the stuff of which hope is made sustained and if the focus is targeted, equality, parity of treatment and fundamental change in the world is founded. Ensuring each person's intrinsic dignity is acknowledged and respected by a process which is fair to all and transparently so, delivers sustainable peace and acceptance multilateral, multidisciplinary partnerships forged to create holistic solutions which place human rights, rule of law and dignity at its core is essential to domestic, international success and peaceful settlement of what can sometimes appear to be intractable problems. Everything I have experienced in my professional and public life whether it's in reforming the criminal and civil justice systems, considering constitutional change, international policy, or domestic legislation to tackle global problems such as corruption, domestic violence, or environmental change, has really confirmed my belief that it is so. Failure to accept this truth lies, I believe, at the heart of every failure in public policy. Until we walk in our neighbours' shoes, we can never know where they pinch. So the power of the acceptance of dignity as a universal concept is, in my view, incalculable. Dignity recognises the intrinsic and equal worth of all human beings, inclusive of characteristics that make us the diverse people we are. All humans are born with intrinsic dignity and it is not a quality which can be earned or one which can be lost. Dignity is the foundation on which we may build respect and understanding for others. It protects people's humanity and identity to ensure that we are all treated with equal regard and that we have a voice, we are heard, seen, we are visible. And at its core, dignity is used to explain why human beings have rights to begin with. Its history is important. The concept of dignitas hominis in classical Roman times largely denoted status. Honour and respect was to be accorded to someone who was worthy of respect. 